Welcome to another episode of Gatsby WordPress theme development. In the previous video we started developing header and we talked about what SEO component it is for Gatsby and how to pass all of the OG tags into it and in this video we will continue with the header development, header component development. Okay. So, okay, so let's open the GraphQL. Okay. Okay, so I have already written the query over here. If you hit it, you can see that you've got all of the data over here, which is your header, your site title, site, uh, favicon, logo URL, uh, header menu items, you know, the child menus, all of that stuff, right? So if you're wondering that, you know, how did we get this get header? Uh, actually, by default, it doesn't come with it. So by default, the WP GraphQL plugin doesn't have this get header. Uh, so for that, I've extended the GraphQL plugin. Uh, so if you actually go on to Imran H. Sayed on GitHub and then go to repository and please follow me if you aren't already and you click on headless CMS. And then if you click on Octotree includes classes this one header footer schema so you can see that I have extended the WP GraphQL plugin and registered my own fields like site logo URL site title tagline favicon and I'm getting that in the field name which is I'm registering this field which is get header same thing then I'm doing that for footer as well so you've got your get footer available and then it's got the copyright text, social icons, all of that stuff. So I'm getting all of the data from WordPress and then I, I can then query it into um yeah, I can then query it into my GraphQL. All right. Uh, if you want to learn more about extending it, extending the WP GraphQL plugin, you can leave it in the comments and I'll I'll probably explain it to you how to do that. Awesome. Uh so that's what we have here. So this is my query and I'm again I'm using the static query to query all of these fields and I'm using a PHP storm extension so that I can go ahead and uh, you know get this formatted this query is formatted uh, for me and then I'm just rendering it I'm rendering the SEO component which I just explained to you about I'm passing the header into it and the header has all the information that it needs then I've also created the header component which is the header static the reason why I'm keeping it separate is because for some reason storybook doesn't like static query so if you have a component where you have the static query as well as the uh, you know your your regular component uh, then uh, you know you may get some errors so there are some github issues you can check out uh, for that okay so that's why I'm keeping it separate but if you're not using storybook you can keep the header component inside of the same so uh, we're just pulling the data so whatever data that we receive from here we're just pulling it off and we're putting pulling off the title site title tagline logo etc and then in case if a user has not added the logo uh, from the customizer then we're just getting the default uh, site logo from from this okay and then we have the link for the home URL the site logo we've got the site title tagline and then we also have the nav menu item so this is my nav and inside of nav what I'm doing is basically uh, using the use state hook from react and then just handling the basically creating the uh, M menu okay so this is not a tutorial for creating M menus but if you know react and if you probably worked with it you already know how to create M menu probably I can teach that to you in a, a different video but you have the code available here you can check it out okay so here we are dealing with the creating the M menu uh, we are pulling off the header menu items which are these menu items from the props and then we are okay and then we are using the class name by the way class name is a very good NPM library you can check it out here it's pretty useful like uh, if you call this function and pass them it will return like foo bar similarly if you if bar is true then it's going to return the foo and bar otherwise it will just return full you can check that out so a pretty neat way of doing it or you can do it in a regular way when you are uh, adding the classes conditionally so I've shown both ways over here you can go with what you like alright so this is just toggling menu for mobile so basically we're trying to build this 
and we also want to do that in the as a M menu over here like this so this is what we're trying to achieve okay great um, and then we just have the uh, header nav menu wrap we are just going to loop through the header menu items that we have here so we just looping through that uh, over here and then also going ahead and checking if it has children or not and then rendering those child menu items so that's what's going on over here okay and this is your burger menu uh, that you s that I've just shown you uh, on the header menu okay so that's nav for you and then I'm just I've just added some styles for my header menu okay and then similarly then if you want that to be in a storybook like I explained to you in the previous video you can just do header.stories.js and then import that header uh, component that you've already created here sorry the, uh, this one header static and then just pass it over here okay so you have components header and the header so now if I run the storybook if I just do npm run storybook it should actually serve that and show that header component so I can work with it in isolation so let it run in the meanwhile we'll continue further and then I'm just passing the data so whatever data I received uh, by doing the query uh, I actually use I'm actually using the same data in, in the JSON format so my storybook can have that data automatically okay right so that's pretty much it and then you have your icons over here so you have your drop down icon facebook icon instagram icon and twitter icon so so this drop down drop down icon if you're wondering how svg works in gatsby theme so this is how you will include spg and this is the drop down icon that we are actually using inside of the nav okay so storybook started there you go so you can see that you've got your header over here right and uh, this is this particular function called normalize path I've added that into utils functions.js so make sure that you copy that from the github repository as well the utils and functions.js and it's just going to basically check if the path ends with the URI path ends with this get the second last item okay great and this is to format the date uh, which we'll probably use later when we are actually uh, rendering the posts so that's pretty much it about the header uh, I hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and this site is live you can check it out it's a PW as well and uh, please do follow me on github as well my github handle is Imran Sayed and my twitter handle is Cody Tech. so thank you so much uh, everyone I'm gonna see you in the next video and we'll talk about the footer Awesome. Take care. Bye-bye.